everyone, it's time for another Fundamentals video. This one's going to be the first of hopefully many centered around web design. For today, before we jump into videos on the actual code or design or anything, let's start with what front-end web code actually is. So when you're visiting a web page, what's actually happening behind the scenes so you can see the designs that you're looking at? Well, I like to think of web design in terms of anatomy. From the inside out, there's HTML first, which acts as the skeleton for your website. HTML, or Hypertext Markup Language, are saved as .html files and are what every page you are seeing on the internet is built from. This is what contains all the text, images, metadata information, links, and more. In essence, HTML is the content of your page, which a browser then displays. But it's not exactly what you would call good looking off the bat. So that's where we get into the next part of your web designs, which is CSS. CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, acts like the skin of your website and can be built into your HTML files or saved separately as CSS files. The purpose of CSS is right in its name in that it styles how the code in your HTML documents is displayed. This is what takes that text, images, etc and controls how it looks and is laid out in the page. Essentially, this is the appearance of your site. After that comes the third language anyone working in web design or development needs to know, and the muscles, if you will, of your web page, JavaScript. JavaScript is a scripting language built specifically for web design. If you're using separate JavaScript files, they'll be saved with the .js extension. JavaScript can change the content, attributes, and styles of your HTML elements from user inputs. You can use it to validate forms, alter your content on clicks, hovers, and with other events, and can even give you alerts. Basically, JavaScript is what controls events on your page that are client-side, which means they don't involve databases. Speaking of databases, nice segue. Let's talk a bit about the brains of your website, the SQL. SQL, pronounced SQL, stands for Structured Query Language. This is the language that lets you access and interact with a database if your site needs to have server-side functionality. This is where we're leaving the front end of the site and getting into more functionality, like you would see in e-commerce or social media sites. SQL lets you search for entries in a database, insert records, and even create entirely new databases and tables. It's the standard language for database work, though there are quite a few different versions of this language that, this being a front-end oriented video, I won't be going into here. This is the language for any information you need to store or use for your site to function. But while it can work if you have a direct access to a database, SQL, on its own, won't do anything with your site. For interaction, you need to use server-side script languages such as PHP. PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. Yes, according to the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3, those people who decide how the internet works, PHP is included in the description of PHP. Anyway, any file using PHP will be saved with the .php extension. PHP files can contain HTML, CSS, JavaScript, pretty much any kind of code. It will work just like a regular website, except it allows you to have access to the server letting you execute SQL code on your database between the sites. Using it, you can turn the data on the database into dynamic pages, which change based on the user or information entered. It also has the ability to output your content as images and PDF files on top of creating HTML code on the fly from user input. When you enter information in a form, this is usually what's going on behind the scenes to process the information and logging you into the system. As with all things, my analogy is not perfect, so I'll be dropping it while going into two other front-end coding languages. And like I said, I won't be going into the back-end coding languages, of which there are many, many, many of them, because we would be here forever. For the first of these, Let's go into jQuery. At the most basic, jQuery is a way of using JavaScript while writing less JavaScript. It's less of a language and more of a library of JavaScript code, making common things you would do with JS take less time and lines of writing. It also simplifies some of the more complicated aspects of JavaScript. jQuery works in all browsers, running exactly the same, even in the bane of web designers and devs everywhere 
is Internet Explorer. You should definitely learn JavaScript first, but once you know it, jQuery will make things much more efficient for you. Unlike all the languages I've gone over thus far, you actually need to download jQuery to be able to use it since, again, it's not in itself a language you can just use. Instead, it's a file, which you then link to in the head tags of any pages that are using it. It comes in both a lightweight production version and a more heavy-duty development version, both of which can be downloaded from jQuery.com, which I'll also link to in the description. Following that, the other language is known as Ajax or asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Ajax serves to create faster, dynamic web pages. It gives you the ability to change parts of a page without reloading the entire page due to the JavaScript part of it. This is another language that connects between a site and its server and any databases on that server, but it uses client-side nature of JavaScript to work differently than PHP, which requires the page to reload for updates to take place. You can find examples of Ajax in sites like Google Maps, YouTube, and Facebook, where the pages are constantly updating on the fly from your input. I could keep going into the pages long list of coding languages from here, but I feel like it would be a bit much, so we'll be going into how you actually make and use this code instead. So to do the code that builds your site, what you'll need is nothing. Honestly, you could build a website with napkins and a pencil if you've got them on you while you're out away from your computer. And I have. You'll need to type it up and make it into a file when you do get to a computer, but if you know the code and how it works, you can build up your entire website before ever sitting down in front of a keyboard. If you are at a keyboard though, you also don't need any kind of expensive or complicated softwares. You don't have to buy or download anything. In fact, Notepad, the default text editor for Windows, is entirely capable of saving to any kind of code file from HTML and CSS to JS and PHP. Similarly, the default text program on Macs, TextEdit, can save right to HTML files. It can save to the other formats that I mentioned, but once you've saved the file, you can just click the file's name where you've saved it and change the extension manually, choosing to use the new extension instead, and this will effectively make the file into that type of document. On top of that, you could do it without any program at all. Sites like jsfiddle.net exist, letting you create your website's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Ajax, PHP entirely free online using their built-in server right in your browser. That said, all of these can be a bit plain. They do the job, but if you're a more RT coder or a more technical programmer, you might want something with a bit more features, shortcuts, and better aesthetics. Luckily, there are tons of open source, which means completely free, code editing software is available for anyone to use. I've linked to it in the description, but I would recommend looking into alternative2.net. This is a site that lets you search for common programs and find all the alternatives you can download for that program. You can refine your search for different OSs, as well as the type of license the program falls under. Clicking any of the results will then usually give you information about that program and a link to the site you can download it from. If you type in Dreamweaver, for instance, there are a ton of results from Notepad++ to Text Wrangler and Aptana Studio, as well as my personal favorite, Brackets. Speaking of Dreamweaver and Brackets, there's another term you'll likely see if you're getting into web design. An acronym so unwieldy I couldn't even begin to think of a pronunciation. W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G stands for what you see is what you get. This is a type of code editing that includes the ability to see what your code's creating as you're coding it. It lets you fine tune your design. It's not something you can do in the text editors like Notepad or Text Wrangler, instead built into the more complex programs like Dreamweaver and Brackets. Though honestly, you can just open your page in the browser and refresh when you make changes and you'll get the same effect albeit with less aesthetics for the actual code editor. And I do think the web designer should learn at least basic code 
before they jump into something like Dreamweaver. Knowing the code will let you fix errors and meet challenges that unexpectedly pop up, as they always will. It will also refine how you do your designs. A common problem for web design is that designers can make the most amazing, gorgeous mockups for a site that have ever been seen, only for it to not be codable as is, and therefore not deliverable to the client. You should learn some of the limitations that each coding language has, so you you don't make a mock-up of something that you can't deliver on. You should know about things like web fonts and knowing how CSS and JavaScript work, which will make for better, more realistic design and especially UI design. Unless you're a web developer, you can't and really shouldn't be expected to know all this code, but it definitely isn't a bad idea for web designers to know the basics to understand how it works so you can do better, more realistic designs and offer your client more value. And that was web code. And my first video related to web and UI design, which I'm personally a big fan of. As always, I hope you've all learned something and enjoyed yourself doing it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or other feedback, you can let me know with a comment down below. You can also like this video and share it around, which helps with Google's rankings. And I'm planning to be back here every Friday, so be sure to subscribe for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.